Opening statements are set to begin in former city state's attorney Marilyn Mosby's mortgage fraud trial. Joining us this morning here uh, at 6 o'clock at 6.05 now, WJ's investigator Mike Helgren, who has been following this case since the very beginning. And first off, Mike, good morning to you. And what can we expect to hear from these opening statements? Good morning, Tim and Cena. The opening statements are the roadmap to the case, and this case has a lot of complex financial documents. So what prosecutors need to do is lay out what they want the jurors to take from that. One of the big allegations is that Mosby failed to disclose a more than $43,000 tax lien in order to get a lower interest rate. Her defense is going to be that her ex-husband, City Council President Nick Mosby, never told her about the tax lien. Prosecutors argue that is not true. So they have to outline what they want the jurors to take from all this evidence. Uh, another allegation is that she rented out one of the properties when she specifically said that she would not do so. So basically, they're outlining their case. That will start at 9.30 this morning in Greenbelt. Well, we know that jury selection wrapped up on Thursday. So do we have any insight on this jury? So, you know, what I can tell you is the judge was very, very careful during the jury selection process. We had a pool of just about 70 potential jurors. They whittled them down to 12 plus four alternates. They were asked specifically whether they knew who Ms. Mosby was and had heard of these allegations. Remember, Mosby successfully petitioned to get the case moved over to Prince George's County because she did not feel that she could get a fair trial in Baltimore City. And uh, uh, lawyers will tell you that many times trials are won during the jury selection process. So uh, each side had a number of strikes in this case where they could strike jurors for no reason whatsoever. They did that. We have a jury panel in place. Uh, I'm sure Mosby hopes that it goes better than her last perjury trial, which was back in November, where she was found guilty. And speaking of that trial, Mike, of course, you were there for that one as well. This one, how long do you suppose it could go? I tell you, Tim, that last one took maybe two to three days. It was really, really quick. The judge is blocked this week and next week for the trial. But we could get a verdict by the end of this week. It's just as I told you at the beginning, there's a lot of complex uh, financial records. Uh, will Nick Mosby take the stand and face some tough cross-examination? Will Marilyn Mosby take the stand? That we don't know. She did not take the stand in her perjury trial. If she takes the stand in this case, jurors uh, well, it will open her up to questions about her perjury conviction. As of now, uh, jurors are not allowed to hear about it as per instructions from the judge. So there are a lot of factors, but we've got the next two weeks. I think it could wrap up before the end of this week. And Mike, just one personal insight I'll ask you, because we hear your voice off camera every time we see Marilyn Mosby and her attorney in and out of the courthouse. Any thought on sentiment? How do they feel? Any uh, idea on how they're approaching this? You know, uh, Marilyn Mosby has appeared upbeat when she's headed into court. She's represented by a public defender. Uh, in her last trial, she had a, a, a fairly large entourage who would accompany her every day, including a photographer who would uh, take pictures of her outside court. This time, she has been arriving at court alone, and her public defender, James Wyda, will greet her and escort her into the courthouse. We'll see what happens today, but she is putting an upbeat face on here. Um, it, even if she's found not guilty, she still has that perjury conviction, and sentencing for that will not happen until after this trial is over. Mike, thank you as always for your insight and expertise on this. We'll be following you throughout the day. Thank you. All right.